Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Paul Clemmy. I'm the Director of Music Ministries here at St. Paul's, and I'm so pleased that you could be with us this afternoon. I'm doubly pleased that we've been able to continue our concert series during this challenging time, and I also appreciate you continuing to mask. Uh, we're still playing it very conservative uh, because we want to make sure that our most vulnerable are still protected for all of our sake. So as soon as we can feel comfortable uh, moving ahead, I very much appreciate you uh, considering that. Now today, I'd like to let you know that uh, you're going to hear something that we've never done before. Uh, this is the May Dudley Memorial Organ Concert. And for those of you who are relatively new to St. Paul's, May Dudley is my predecessor once removed. So May uh, served here at the parish uh, during the 70s and the 80s. Uh, she and her husband, Wink, are very much responsible for the organ that you see up against the back wall. Uh, the organ here on the back wall is built by Gabriel Ney, who's a Canadian builder, and this organ was built in 1975. Now, it's a tracker action organ, so what that means is all the mechanical parts with the keys going up to the pipes are all mechanical action. There's no electricity involved. This is a pipe organ, and the pipes that you see on the facade are actually working pipes. Uh, so this, this organ was built on neo-baroque principles. In other words, this organ, if you were to dial the clock back about 300 years, you would see and hear something very similar to this. So um, this organ has been with us now for about 40 years. And, uh, but the thing that's unusual about this concert is that not only will you hear this organ on the back wall, but we have a new organ since the last time you heard this concert, and it's sitting right here in front of me. Now this is uh, an organ that was built by Richard Bond in 1988. Richard Bond is a Portland builder, and this organ was in First Presbyterian Church here in Salem for quite some time until last year. So this organ is what we call a portative organ. It's a very small pipe organ. And it too is tracker action, is mechanical action, but the pipes are inside and portative means portable. So this organ, I can literally roll it out of the room and roll it back into the room by myself. It's portable. And typically what happens with an organ like this is that you might see it in ensembles. Like for example, if, you, if we were to play a Bach cantata, that this organ would be perfect for a Bach cantata. However, you're going to hear it played solo today. And then you're going to hear a third instrument. Uh, this is uh, Owen Daly's 2022 Venetian harpsichord that was just completed very, very recently. And so Owen is with us today, and uh, so you're going to hear an artist that can play all three of these instruments very well. So before we begin, I would just like to say that I hope that you can come back for our May and June concerts. We have nine concerts every year, and I'm hoping uh, that we'll be back full strength uh, in the fall, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, unveiling that new season here in a couple of months. If you are new to us, this particular concert series is self-sustaining. In other words, the offerings that we get from you today and those who have joined the Music Guild help us put on these concerts. So if you're able, I invite you to give a contribution at the plate in the back or to make a donation online. You just simply go to the website and I thank you for that. Now typically we have um, a prayer service that precedes these concerts, but during this pandemic, we are kind of trying to keep the time down in the room. But I would like to offer three prayers for you since this is a house of prayer. Today, a couple of things are heavy on my heart. I would like to pray for the people of Ukraine and for peace among the nations. As I listen to the news, I listen to the ongoing discussion about climate change and the preservation of our planet. 
and I'm going to pray for the preservation of our planet. And I'm reading out of the Book of Common Prayer, and there's a specific prayer for rain. And so I think my prayer will be answered for tomorrow because the forecast looks like there's plenty of rain. But sometimes we cannot get enough rain. And so I'm going to offer three prayers. Let us pray. For the people of Ukraine, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide all of the nations among the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace, which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for the preservation of our planet. Almighty God, in giving us dominion over things on earth, you made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence, so to use the resources of nature that no one may suffer from our abuse of them and that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for the rain that quenches the dryness, O God, Heavenly Father, by thy Son Jesus Christ has promised to all who seek thy kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain their life. Send us, we entreat thee in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to thy honor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today I'm very, very pleased that we can welcome Hannah Brewer to St. Paul's. I've known Hannah for some time and she is part of music ministry in the Diocese of Oregon. Hannah has been director of music and organist at the parish of St. Michael and All Angels for quite some time, and I've been wanting her to come to St. Paul's. And the thing that I love about Hannah is that she's so well-versed in all three of these instruments. You're in for a treat. Would you please welcome Hannah Brewer?
Thank you. Thank you for coming to my recital of keyboard music for Lent and Holy Week. That opening piece was probably by C.P.E. Bach, not entirely confirmed. It has been attributed in the past to his father, J.S. Bach, hence the BWV number, but it's thought now to be originally from a suite for harpsichord by C.P.E. Bach. The hymn tune it's based on, Auster Tiefe, is the opening words to Psalm 130, which translates to, Out of the depths I cry to thee, O Lord. Indeed, Lenten liturgical music can be dramatic, as you've heard, profound, and full of lamenting motives, which you'll hear lots of in upcoming works. Before we get to all that, though, I will next play several pieces that are not specifically Lenten. First is a slow toccata by the Italian composer Frescobaldi that was written for the most sacred part of the Mass, in which the sacraments are raised or elevated during communion, seen in the title Alla Levazione. The liturgical piece highlights pure tones and intervals along with quick embellishments, which is why, along with its liturgical purpose, I have chosen to use simple flute stops rather than anything grander. And since there are no pedals for this piece, it's particularly suitable to be played on the positive organ here. Then I will play two contrasting pieces based on the chorale tune Vater Unser im Himmelreich, Our Father in Heaven, also not specifically for Lent, as it's Martin Luther's paraphrase of the Lord's Prayer. The tune does have some melancholy, however, so I think it still works well for the Lenten season. Um, let me play that tune for you right now. So pretty melancholy tune. So first you'll hear the chorale melody in a set of ornamented variations by the Dutch late Renaissance early Baroque composer Jan Pietersoen's Phalink, which I've chosen to play on the harpsichord. Um, it works well on either a keyboard instrument. The music of Phalink is considered the pinnacle of Dutch keyboard repertoire, and Phalink was also a renowned improviser and teacher, leading to the establishment of the North German organ tradition. Following the harpsichord piece, I'll head back to the main organ for a chorale prelude on that same tune by the German Baroque composer Georg Böhm. This one approaches the original material very differently, with a stark accompanying motive in the left hand and pedal, with the beautifully embellished chorale melody, virtually unrecognizable, in the right hand. It's truly a gorgeous work that surely influenced Bach's own embellished chorales a little bit later in the 18th century. So please enjoy these next three keyboard works on the two organs and harpsichord. And feel free to clap in between um, so we don't have awkward silences as I'm walking to different instruments.
Next, we have an unusual biblical sonata by the German Baroque composer Johann Kuhnau, who many of you might not be as familiar with. He wrote a series of these programmatic sonatas for keyboard. Again, they work on either the organ or harpsichord. I will play them on harpsichord. These are based on stories from the Hebrew Bible. Hezekiah was the 7th century BCE son of Ahaz and the 13th king of Judah. The story of Hezekiah's illness and restoration can be found in 2 Kings, which describes how King Hezekiah became gravely ill with boils, perhaps the bubonic plague, how he prayed to God and then was healed. The opening section of the piece is basically a lament utilizing the famous Passion Chorale, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. And let me play that for you, that tune.
The second section of the sonata, you'll hear, um, will gain in confidence as Hezekiah puts his trust in God. You'll still hear that same lament of a chorale melody, but this time it's in the context of a faster, more dance-like section. Then in the third section, you'll hear the rather bipolar swings of emotion in the music, one moment a giddy and joyous celebration of the king's restored health, and the next quite somber and thoughtful as Hezekiah recalls his past misery. Luckily, in contrast to the beginning of the sonata, we end on a high, all memories of his past sorrows forgotten. And you can follow along in your program, which gives the narrative for each section of music.
In this next set, we move forward about 200 years to highlight two late 19th, early 20th century composers who again may not yet be household names. First, we have a prelude and fugue by the English composer Ethel Smith, or rather Dame Ethel Smith, the first female composer to be awarded damehood in 1922. She was a member of the women's suffrage movement and was often marginalized by her musical contemporaries as a woman composer not to be taken seriously. Nevertheless, she persevered in writing successful operas and orchestral music, as well as some organ works like the one you'll hear today, O Traurigkeit, O Herzeleid, O Darkest Woe, is a chorale text depicting the pain and suffering of Christ's passion. It's not a particularly familiar chorale tune, so I'll play it for you here. Smith sets this tune in the form of a short prelude and a longer contrapuntal fugue, combining this Baroque era form with uh, romantic era sensibilities, including rubato and legato touch. If you get lost along the way, listen for a final adagio at the end of the fugue that plays out the chorale tune in its entirety. Then we'll have a chorale improvisation by the German organ composer Siegfried Kargelert. He wrote 66 of these chorale improvisations published in the first decade of the 20th century. The one I'll play is based on Herz Liebster Jesu, often sung to the hymn, Ah, Holy Jesus, another well-known Lutheran chorale melody for Passiontide. And just to remind you how it goes, Karg Ehlert indicates a mysterious, moody set of registrations to reflect the sorrowful text, and you'll hear lots of dissonant intervals to express that lament theme.
To round out the program, I thought I'd leave you on a not-so-gloomy note. This final piece is an uplifting, joyful interpretation of the choral tune Falat fil ich der Geben, more commonly known now as the Palm Sunday hymn All Glory, Laud, and Honor. I'll give you a reminder of what that sounds like. So in Bach's time, this tune was actually known as a Sterbelied, a hymn for the dying, a fare thee well. Still, Bach chooses to set it in a lively rather than a morbid fashion, perhaps to indicate the hope and the possibility of joy in life after death. Listen for the hymn tune in the pedal. Also, as this chorale prelude ends rather abruptly for a concert recital, I will follow it immediately with Bach's own chorale harmonization of Fallet Phil, like a cantata chorus finale. Please enjoy, and thank you again for coming to listen to this keyboard music for the season of Lent. <laughs> 